All right, now we're beginning with problem number six. And in problem number six, there's a lot of work to do. First of all, do you know what D stands for in D, uh, R times T equals D? D, of course, is distance. R is rate. And T stands for time. Those are three points that you should all get real easily on your official test. Well, if we have distance, rate, and time, we know that the rate times the time equals the distance. So let's look at this. Well, if I have a rate that I don't know, that's where I'm going to put R. If I have a T that I know, I'm going to put that in, 25, equals the distance, 100. How would you solve and find out what R is? You can probably see that it's going to be 4, but to actually solve algebraically, I'm going to divide both sides by 25. And of course, R equals 4. So that's the first problem that you see there. First problem four. So this will be four. I need to fill that in. Then we have the second part of the this uh, what table, I guess you could say. Rate is 50 times the time, which is, hmm, I don't know. I'll call that T, equals the distance, which is 1,000. I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides by 50 to find the time. This is a giant one. T equals 100 divided by 5 is 20. 20 hours. Now, I want to share this next part with you because if you'll notice, we have millimeters. We have millimeters per second. And then this is minutes. It might be helpful to you. If you make sure that when you're looking across that all the units are the same. And here we have miles, miles per hour, hours. Miles, miles, miles. Okay, that's good. Millimeters, millimeters per second, and then we have minutes. Take, on your test, you will have one like this. Make sure you make this into hours or minutes or whatever it is, two or seconds, so it's the same here. Okay, these need to be the same. So I'm gonna call this seconds, but how many seconds will this be? Anybody? Anybody? Yes, 120. 120 seconds. So let's go ahead and say, what is our distance? We don't know. I'm going to call that D. We know our rate is 65. We know our time is 120 seconds. And we just take 65 times, oh my God, 65 times, uh, Sixty-five times one hundred and twenty seconds is. Let's see, sixty-five. I'd have to put it in my calculator. Times one twenty. That is seventy-eight hundred millimeters. Now, on your practice test, it might have the wrong question. It might be mixed up, but in the one that I have for part B, that's what I have there. Okay. But watch out for these things like this, where it says minutes and seconds. Okay, watch out. That's number six. If we go on to number seven, what I'm hoping is number seven is the same as what I have on my list here. It, I do. Okay. So it says draw a diagram. Let's go here. Draw a diagram to represent each of the following. Well, we have a motorcycle that travels 65 miles an hour for one and a half hours, and it will travel 97 and a half miles. So to draw a diagram, I'm gonna draw a linear diagram, and that's what we're asking you to do, okay? I know I go one hour, okay? Then I'm gonna go half of that amount to right there. Here's 0.5 hours, 0 0.5 hours. Notice I'm labeling, okay? This would be 65 for one hour, how much would this be I think that's 32.5 miles so the total would be I'm gonna put this right here 97.5 miles okay that's the first one the second one 
part B. A car travels 60, 60 miles per hour for five hours and it will travel 300 miles. Well, if it's 60 miles per hour for five hours, okay, one, two, three, four, five. So here's one hour, one hour, one hour, one hour, one hour. Okay, that's all there is to it. And we have 60, 60, 60, 60, and 60. So you go miles, miles, etc., all the way across, and hours. And we have 65 times with hours everywhere. Okay, that's what you want to show. And that is, of course, 300 miles. Now, a hot air balloon travels X miles per hour for three hours. So what does that look like? Well, for three hours, the hot air balloon for three hours. Here's hour uh, one, hour two, and hour three. Three hours. And travels X miles each time. We have to make sure that when we're filling in these boxes, we don't put one and then the number two and then the number three, because we're looking at the, the distance from here to here and here to here, those all three being equal. So they each have a distance of one hour on the number line here. Okay, there it is. So that's three X miles. It's X plus X plus X. And the last one. Oh, I'll show you that. I'll leave that up there a little bit. You can pause the video and take a look at it better if you want. The last one, D, hydroplane. We're going 4X miles per hour for five hours. So we're doing that five times. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. Oh, I drew five lines, but I didn't draw five spaces. One, two, three, four, five. Good. Okay, so I have one hour there. How many miles am I going? 4x each time. So that's how many miles I'm going, 4x each time. That will give us a grand total of 20x miles. And if this is hours, that will be five hours. There's number seven. Feel free to forward, uh, pause the video and hit return uh, and return to spots if you need to look through that again. Okay, here's the next problems. Number eight, you'll see ones just like this, of course, on your test. And of course, the diagrams you'll see as well. All right, so the first thing we want to do is try to figure out how we're gonna solve for E. Well, I could go ahead and multiply everything by eight to help me solve. Or I could just go ahead and say, hey, here's the term with the E or the variable in it. I will go ahead and just leave that there for right now. Leave it there. And I'm gonna add 20 to both sides, okay? Just because a term has a, fra has a fractional part doesn't mean it's still not a term, it's still a term. So we're going to make this my zero pair. And that's why I chose to add 20. E over eight equals, let's see, 105 plus 20 is 125. To solve for E, I go ahead and multiply by 8 on each side. Multiply by 8. We can call that 8 over 1 if you like. We know from our past work that this 8 over 8 is going to be a giant 1, or 1. E equals 125 times 8, which happens to be 1,000. Letter B is done very similarly, but just notice that they're a little different order. This time the second term has the variable in it. It doesn't change the, what we do, but it has the variable in that second term. And just like the other term, it has a fractional part with our variable. But this is still the term with the variable. We want to have this variable term by itself. So I subtract 32 because I see that's a positive 32. I subtract 32 from each side. When I do that, I get h over 12. That's what remains on the left side. On this side, I have a negative number, a positive number. Let's see, larger minus smaller is seven, but the larger's 
number sign is a negative. So I'm going to have negative 7 is this part right here. Now, I'm dividing by 12. How do I undo my division? I multiply by something. And what do I multiply by? That same number that's in the denominator. That way, this becomes my giant 1, and those cancel out. H equals negative 7. I also have to divide this, I uh, multiply, excuse me, not by, multiply this side by 12. When I multiply by 12, because I multiplied by 12 over here, negative 7 and 12 is negative 84. Please, please, please be cognizant that you need to have your negative signs, okay? That's a big issue because negative 7 does not equal 7. It's really, really important that we remember that, okay? That's a lot of writing over there. Now, this last one, the variable term is on the right-hand side of my equation, okay? The right-hand side of my equation. So I'm going to go ahead and um, do what I've done before. Try to keep the x term, or the term with the x, on one spot there, and get rid of the rest. By subtracting 17 from both sides, I can do that. When I do that, this of course becomes a zero pair, and it's what I want, so I can have the x term by itself on the right side of the equation. And on the left side, 35 minus 17, which ends up being 18. 18 equals x over 5. So what is my next step? To undo that multiplication, I'm going to multiply by that same number, 5. I'm going to multiply by 5, or 5 over 1, however you want to write it. Over here, 5, or 5 over 1, however you want to write it. Okay? Mm. Mm. It's thundering outside where I am. I don't know if you can hear that, but certainly, certainly incredible. Okay, so this is 5 over 5. That becomes my giant 1. That drops out. So I end up with x equals 5 times 18 is 90. If we go on to number 9, number 9, we have 30 on this side, 15 here. And I know similar sides, if you see on your test, th this 30 would be similar to that side. This 15 would be similar to that side. So what I usually put down here is this I call my original original picture, and this is my new, and I like to write proportions. My new over my original. Well, I know my new side would be x, and it corresponds to that 30. So I put x over 30. And it should equal this same ratio, 12 over 15. I think most of you could probably see that I'm just going to go ahead and multiply this by 2. Notice I'm going the opposite direction, and that's okay. Multiply these by 2, I get 24 for x. Okay, so I'm going to say x equals 24. Over here, we have a couple different variables we want to find. I want to find the 8 and the y. Those are the uh, similar sides. I have 3 and 15, those are similar, and x and the 38.5. We call those corresponding sides, corresponding. That means that they have similar ratios. So if I have this side, the original, and that would be my new side, so I'd say the new I would say my new, which is 15, over my original, which is 3. Okay? Now, how about this? If I have my new side 35, 38.5, it corresponds to the x. So this proportion, this is going to be a proportional relationship. 38.5 over x. I can use the same ratio, 15 over 3 equals y over 8, because it's the new side over the original side, y over 8. Now these are going to be some pretty interesting numbers, I think. Okay, let's try to do this by 
cross multiplication. This will be 15x equals 38.5 times 3. So then I divide both sides by 15. And when I figure this part out, let's see. This is number 9. Number 9. Let me see. It says 24 in my answer key. I'm not really sure. With a decimal number like that? Let's see. 38.5 times 3.5915 is. Hmm. Well, I have 7.7. .7. Okay, this is actually not 24. There's no way it could be, because if this was 24, that would, these two wouldn't, no. So it's going to be 7.7. .7. Okay, 7.7. .7. Okay. Then this next one, I'm going to use um, cross multiplication again. I get 3y equals 15 times 8. 15 times 8 is going to be 120. And I divide by 3. I divide by 3. y equals 120 divided by 3. And that is 40. So that is 40. There we go. Oh, I see what I did. I looked at the wrong number. Yes, this is 7.7 .7 and this is 40. Very good. Now let's look at this. It's, now we actually have the cross multiplication that can work. However, I also noticed that 35 over 70, does anyone notice what that is? This is the same as 1 half. I can write 1 half equals x over 100. I'm going to multiply both top and bottom by 50 to get my x. 50 times 1 is x. x is 50. Now, this one might not be so easily seen, so I'm going to just go ahead and cross multiply here. 4x equals 32, 32 times 10.5. 32 times 10.5, and I'm going, to, I'm going to divide by 4. I'm going to just divide by 4 here. That becomes a 1. Holy cow, you can't even see that, can you? What am I doing? So again, 35 over 70 is simply 1 half. X over 100, and we just multiply here by 50 to get the X. And this we're going to cross multiply. We get 32 times 10.5 and 4 times x. I'm going to divide both sides by 4 because that's the coefficient of the x. So I can get a giant 1 and that's how that drops out. So I get x equals, let's see, x equals 0.5. Is that 84? It says 84 in my text answer key, but I'm going to multiply this out. 32 times 10.5 divided by 4. Well, I hit the wrong button. 32 times 10.5 divided by 4. Let's do that. Yep, it sure is. It's 84. There you go. So I'm going to stop this video and we'll do the last few questions on my third video. There you go.